Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome back to our fabric modding tutorial series for 1.16. Now in this episode, we're gonna be adding a custom basic item to the game with its own texture and its own name. So to do that, you wanna come over to your main package here. You wanna right click, create a new package and we're gonna name this registry. Now this registry package over time is gonna fill up with classes that will register the various objects that we're going to add to the game. But for right now, we're just focusing on items. So you wanna create a new class inside of this registry package named mod items. And this mod items class is going to slowly fill up with the items that you add to the game. So in order to create an item in fabric, inside of your mod items class, you wanna create a new public static final item and make sure you import item real quick, import class. Uh, and you wanna name this item essentially the name of your object in all capitals. So in my case, I'm gonna be adding a Ruby to the game. So I would put Ruby. If your uh, item has multiple spaces in its name, you would use an underscore. So if you were, for example, making like a stained glass object, you would put stained underscore glass, just like that. Uh, for me, I'm gonna put Ruby. And this is gonna equal a new item. And this is gonna pass in just some settings. So to pass in some settings, you want a new item dot settings dot, and you can see that, that there's a few settings we can really play around with, but really all we care about right now is the group. So you wanna set the group, and this is going to determine the uh, creative tab that uh, this item falls under when you are in creative mode. So to set a tab, you wanna do item group dot, and then you can choose a creative tab from this list. In my case, uh, I'm going to choose materials because Ruby is a material similar to like, uh, you know, like a diamond or gold. So I'm gonna be choosing that one, but you can choose whatever you want. And this will set the, uh, the group for your creative menu. Now you can add additional settings if you would like, as you can see here, but I will be covering most of these in the advanced items tutorial later on in this series. So really all you need to worry about right now is setting the item group for your creative tab. So now that we have our item actually created, we need to register it to the game. So to do this, I'm gonna make a method for this. So I'm gonna do public static void, and then we're gonna call this register items. Now this method uh, is just going to register our items. So to do that, we want to get the registry and then use the static.register method. And this is gonna pass in three things. First, the registry. So you wanna do registry dots, and this will determine what type of registry, what type of deferred registry you are um, adding this item to. In our case, it's an item, so you wanna select item, add a comma, and then the second parameter is going to be an identifier. So we wanna create a new identifier, identifier, and this is gonna take in our mod ID and then the name of our item. So to get your mod ID, you want to get your main class, so in my case, tutorial, dot and then you should have your mod id again we created that uh, static um, final string here in our main class in the last episode and then of course you also want to pass in the name of your actual object so this name should be exactly what you have here just all lowercase so in my case ruby and you can include those underscores again if you're using spaces so you could do like stained underscore glass here but again i'm going to put ruby for mine and then the last parameter you wanna add for our register method is um, the actual item. So you can just pass in Ruby. And again, that is this item right here. You can just copy and paste it down into here and add a semicolon. So yeah, there we go. Our item is now registered, or at least it will be uh, once we add this to the main class and uh, our item should be in the game. It won't have a texture yet or a name, but we'll fix that in a second. So uh, what you wanna do to make sure that this method gets called is come to your main class and in your on initialize method here that we override, you want to grab your mod items class and then just dot register items. That way on initialize our mod actually registers our items to the game. So now that we have our item in the game, what you wanna do is actually add a texture to it. So to add a texture, we need to come over to our resources folder here and go to assets. And you should already have a folder here that uh, is named your mod ID. So again, your mod ID is what we set right here. Um, and so if you don't have that, you can create that right now, but uh, open that up and you're gonna create some new packages in here. So first you wanna create a directory named models. Then you wanna also create another directory in your mod ID uh, package here named textures. So you should have in your tutorial or whatever the name of your mod ID package is, a models uh, folder and a textures folder. Now inside of models, we wanna right click, create a new directory and you wanna name this item just singular. And then in textures, you wanna right click, create a new directory, and this should be named items, plural. 
So again, you should have a models folder with an item inside of it or an items package inside of it and then uh, a textures folder with an items package inside of it. So now that that's done, we can actually create our model. So in order to uh, assign a texture to our custom item, we need a JSON file that essentially specifies what texture is going to be used for our object. So we can do that by inside of models item, we want to right click, create a new uh, file here, and you want to name this file the same name as your, your uh, object. So whatever you put right here for your path. So in my case, Ruby, and then .json, hit enter and add a repository. So this is gonna be empty of course, but to make this easy for you guys, I did actually throw together a paste bin that you can get in the description right now. It should be linked down below and you can just copy this paste bin. This will have all of the JSON code for you and you can just paste it in. And uh, this is a, a model JSON. So just to run through this really quickly, it's uh, determining what the model looks like uh, here. Uh, we're saying that this is an item generated. So basically just like a regular item in Minecraft. And then we're setting the texture to a single layer, which is going to be specified here. This is basically what the texture uh, is pulling from. So you wanna replace mod ID with your mod ID. And again, mod ID is what we set right here. So tutorial for me. And then uh, you wanna change the item name to what you put in mod items for the name of your Ruby. So this right here, just copy and we can paste in. So again, you want your mod ID colon items slash and then the name of your object, your item that you are creating. And you're gonna have to do this for every single item that you create, by the way, just so you know. Now we actually need to add this texture that we're specifying to our packages. So go to your desktop and I will leave a link in the description to a really great tutorial on how to make your own textures for Minecraft if you don't know already, but you can open up something free or simple like GIMP or paint.net, or even if you have Photoshop, that'll work great as well. And you can create your texture. You wanna make sure that your texture is uh, 16 by 16 uh, width and height uh, in pixels. It can also be increments of 16, so like 32 by 32, uh, but I would recommend just starting with 16 by 16 if it's your first item. And yeah, so once you've done that, uh, you want to name your item, the exact name that you have set for your item here. So in my case, Ruby. Uh, and again, if this was like a stained glass thing with a space in between, you would do stained underscore glass, like that with an underscore. Uh, so mine is gonna be Ruby. And you wanna drag this into IntelliJ and just drag it into your items folder instead of textures. And we can refactor, add a repository. And as you can see here in our textures folder instead of items, we now have our ruby.png. So just to run through this one more time, our ruby.json is essentially a JSON file that is directing the, uh, the fabric loader or the game rather to say, hey, we're making an item, it's item generated, and the texture here is going to be set to this package location, which happens to be right here. So yeah, everything should be working great. Now, one last thing we need to do is actually add a name to our, our item. So to do that, what you wanna do, let's close up these packages here. You wanna create a new package in your, uh, your mod ID package, so tutorial for me. Create a new directory. And uh, again, this is in resources assets. And you wanna name this lang. And this is gonna hold your language files. So uh, for this case, I'm going to use English, but obviously you could use your language if you wanted to. So I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call this en underscore us dot json. And uh, you can add a repository. Now this JSON file will hold like the language essentially for your items. So you wanna add some curly braces here and you can keep adding uh, entries over time, but uh, a simple entry would be just some parentheses and then you would want item dot your mod ID. So in my case, tutorial dot, and then the name of your, uh, your item. And again, that name is right here. So Ruby, and then you want a colon and then another set of uh, quotation marks. And this, what you put inside of these quotation marks will be what shows up in the game uh, as the name of your object. So you could put spaces here. You could put like Ruby, shiny objects, really whatever you want. So I'm gonna put Ruby uh, just so it's simple. But yeah, every time you wanna add a new item into your lang, just add a comma and uh, add a new entry. And the last entry should not have a comma, of course. So yeah, there you go. Uh, and now if we actually run the game, it should actually work. So come up to that green triangle here, click it, and I will see you in the game to test this out.
All right, so we're inside of the game now, and if you open up your creative inventory and you go to the search items tab and you scroll all the way down, you should see your custom item right there. And you can see that it does have our custom name we set, Ruby, and uh, it also has our texture. And if we throw it on the ground, it is working great, just like a regular item. Uh, so yeah, everything is working perfectly. Now, one thing you should check is that the item group that you set is correct. So if you remember, we set our uh, our creative tab or item group to, um, to materials, but Mojang actually combined materials and miscellaneous into one tab. So that's why it says miscellaneous here. But if we check the miscellaneous tab, we can see that our item is in there and it's working great. So that's all perfect. Uh, and one more thing I wanna show you is that if you don't wanna use the creative menu to get your item, you can always do slash give at P for the player and then your mod ID, so tutorial, colon, and then the name of your object, so Ruby. And that will give you the object if you don't wanna interact with the creative menu. All right, so that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot about items. Now, one thing I wanna mention really quickly before we end the video is that if you go in the description, you will notice that I have a GitHub and a Discord link. The GitHub will take you to all the source code for these videos, so you can check out everything that I did and copy it if you would like. Uh, and then the Discord is a help and support channel, as well as a really active community of around 1,500 modders and uh, developers just like you, uh, and you can interact with them and get some help. So definitely check out those links if you would like, and I will see you in the next episode.